name is Chris Morosky. And I'm Rebel Hassan. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on manual and left forceps rotation of the fetal head. The goals and objectives of this video are as follows. Discuss the complications associated with the persistent occiput posterior position. Review the indications and contraindications for fetal head rotation. Demonstrate manual rotation of the fetal head and demonstrate left forceps rotation of the fetal head. First, we will review the persistent occiput posterior position and its associated complications. The persistent occiput posterior position occurs when the occiput of the fetal head remains in the posterior quadrants of the maternal pelvis until delivery. This occurs in approximately 5 to 10 percent of deliveries. The problem with the persistent OP position is that it presents a larger diameter of the fetal head to the increasingly narrower pelvic outlet. For example, for a fetus in the occiput anterior position, the presenting diameter to the pelvis is the suboccipitobrigmatic diameter, which is on average 9.5 centimeters in length. On the contrary, for a fetus in the occiput posterior position, the presenting diameter to the pelvis is the occipitofrontal diameter, which is on average 11.5 centimeters in length. As you can see, this larger presenting diameter can be associated with several complications. These include a longer second stage of labor, higher rates of operative vaginal deliveries, failed operative vaginal deliveries, cesarean delivery, and increased risk for third and fourth degree perineal lacerations. There are relatively few contraindications to rotation of the fetal head. These include suspected fetal macrosomia, high station of the fetal head, or suspected contracted maternal pelvis. For left forceps rotations, all of the contraindications to forceps application and use would also apply. There is some debate about prophylactic rotation of the OP fetal head prior to pushing versus offering rotation after some duration of time pushing in the second stage of labor. Evidence shows that rotation is more likely to be successful when performed early, and patients are more likely to have a spontaneous vaginal delivery following prophylactic rotation. It is important to keep in mind that 50 to 80 percent of OP babies at the beginning of the second stage will rotate to the OA position by the time of delivery. And for some patients, particularly those with an anthropoid pelvis, can successfully deliver vaginally from the OP position. We will next review the technique for manual rotation of the fetal head. After confirming that the patient has adequate anesthesia and a drained bladder, the examiner's hand is introduced into the pelvis. Prior to this, we confirm fetal head position digitally and with an ultrasound, so that for a fetus with an OP to LOP position, is rotated with the examiner's right hand in a counterclockwise rotation, and for a fetus with an OP to ROP position, is rotated with the examiner's left hand in a clockwise rotation. Once the rotating hand's fingers are placed evenly across the occiput of the fetal head with the thumb alongside the right parietal bone, the fetal head station is first gently reduced by pushing in a superior direction. This allows the rotation to occur in the mid-pelvis to pelvic inlet, where there is more space for the rotation. Care should be taken not to reduce the station too far, as this can precipitate a cord prolapse. Rotation of the fetal head is accomplished through pronation of the examiner's hand. Often at the transverse position, there is some resistance. The operator can move the hand back to a supinated position and re-grab the occiput. Slight flexion of the fetal head toward the chest will assist with the next round of pronation of the examiner's hand and lead to complete rotation of the fetal head to an anterior position. We normally hold the fetal head in the anterior position over the next two contractions, where the patient is asked to push during the contractions. This allows the fetal head to be brought back down into the pelvic outlet, where the occiput can be brought under the pubic bone. Next, we will review the technique for left forceps rotation of the fetal head. Dr. Morris Left from New York City first published on his new rotational forceps in 1955. As you can see, left forceps are small and light and really can only be used for rotation and not extraction. These small, fenestrated blades have a very minimal cephalic and pelvic curve. The small, flattened shanks are brought together by what can be described as a French lock. 
The handles are light, and in the back there is a flange which is brought together by a wing nut, which secures the branches together. And at the top of the handle are two directional posts, which identify the position of the fetal head throughout the rotation. Similar to the crossed forceps of Simpson or Elliott, the left forceps are easily placed within the pelvis and then wandered into position around the fetal head. The smaller blades make placement and wandering very simple. Proper placement is confirmed by palpating the edge of the blades in relationship to the anterior fontanelle and coronal suture lines. The forceps are then closed and the fetal head station is reduced by gently pushing superiorly. The forceps handles are held secure by both hands of the examiner and are rotated in the proper direction, counterclockwise for left lying fetuses and clockwise for right lying fetuses. Again, at the transverse position, slight articulation of the forceps while maintaining some rotational torque allows the fetal head to flex towards the chest. This allows completion of the rotation and often the examiner will feel a clunk or hear a small amount of suction released as the head rotates to the OA position. The forceps are kept in place while the patient pushes over the next two contractions to bring the fetal head back into the pelvic outlet and to secure the occiput under the pubic bone. Once in place, the forceps are removed. Following the successful rotation to an OA position, the patient can either be allowed to push for a spontaneous delivery or extraction forceps or vacuum assisted vaginal delivery can be offered. And that's a wrap for this video on manual and left forceps rotation of the fetal head. Whether performed prophylactically or after a trial of pushing in the second stage of labor, familiarity with these two rotational techniques will provide your patient with more options to achieve a successful vaginal delivery. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.